When you're building out software, one of the things you should probably do, and this is something that I have been doing on every single professional project I have been paid to work on, is writing some type of testing. Whether that's unit testing, integration testing, end-to-end -end testing, finding a way to automate that your changes are not breaking the current functionality has a lot of value. And finding how much effort to put into the testing is something you learn along the way. You can waste a lot of time trying to add tests. But I want to walk you through VTest that I set up on this project. And we're going to try to write a test together in this, this uh, video. Okay, so one of the features I have is that when you pick up a gun, you have to make sure you have ammo in your inventory down here. And if you don't, you can't fire the gun. So if I were to drop this, notice I can't fire. Okay, I have to have the ammo. But when I run out of ammo, it doesn't actually remove the bullet from my inventory. Okay. I would like that to just be automatically deleted. Like I don't want an empty stack of bullets. This is kind of weird. So this is where testing comes in. We found a little bug and I would like to write a test first. This is kind of like a test driven development approach. I know people are very dogmatic about that word, but honestly, just, 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 just relax everyone. Just relax. Like test driven development has its use cases. And I think this is a good scenario when you want to use it. So in my game server, I have VTest set up. And over here, I have a npm run test game server. And that's going to run through some tests. And I have some that test like the bandages. I have some that tests the zombies can, can get killed and stuff. But what would be good is if I go to this player test, let's go ahead and open this one up. And we want to add another it statement here. So the way vtest works is you have like these before each uh, functions that you can call. And this just helps you set up some things that are going to be used in all your different um, test scenarios, right? And then if you have an individual test, you can use this it statement. This is very, this is very similar to the jest. If you've used jest, this is very similar. It has like the, basically the same interface, right? So what I want to do first of all is just walk you through how a test might look. Again, this is for a game, but this concept is the same whether you're doing a website, a web API, a desktop app. The idea of testing is universal. Okay, there's usually like a setup phase. So this is where I'm setting up some things. This is generic setup for all the tests. And this is some setup for this particular it statement. Okay, so a player should be able to fire a pistol if the pistol is selected in his inventory. Okay, so what we do is we create a player up here and then we give him a pistol and then we give him some ammo and then we select slot one and then we make sure that the player is set to be firing and then we verify. So here you start coming into some expect statements, assert statements. You want to verify something. So we do some setup. We do some pre-setup, some pre-verification. I want to make sure that there's no bullets anywhere in the game. So I basically say, hey, give me all the entities in my game. Make sure that there's absolutely no bullets. So I'm basically saying game has some bullets. Expect that to be false. This is how you write expect statements or assert statements in VTest. You basically say expect. You pass it a Boolean or a string or whatever variable you want. And then you can check different things. Like you can say to be false. You can say to equal one, etc. And then what we do is we update. So I'm basically saying, hey, just do a single game server tick update. And then I want to verify some things. I want to verify that, hey, I want to make sure that a bullet has been added to this list. Okay, that's it. The very, very simple test. Give the player a gun, some ammo. You tell them to fire and you verify a bullet gets into the game sometime, right? Now you could check other things too. You could check that the bullet has a certain velocity when it was first created. You can check that the bullet didn't hurt the player in accident when it's created. But I think having smaller bite-sized tests that just verify as minimal functionality as you can is a lot easier to maintain. If you start adding a bunch of stuff to this test, it just becomes uh, kind of a nightmare. But okay, so with that being said, let's just copy this whole test and we're going to write a new one. Again, what are we trying to test? Start with a really descriptive is statement. And I'm going to say the ammo should be removed from the player's inventory after firing the last bullet. Okay. So again, same setup. And you can probably do some like, you know, dry some code up and pull out some helper functions or whatever. But we're just going to set up a player with a pistol in one count of ammo. And then again, all the same stuff as before. But at this point, we don't need to verify a bullet gets put into the game because we verify that already. Okay, so we don't need to verify that. We don't need to verify this. Instead, what do we need to verify? We need to check that the player's inventory no longer has any pistol ammo. So I'm going to say expect 
player inventory. You could check the length. I think just doing something more specific might be a little bit better. So I'm going to say player.getInventory. And then I will say um, sum. And then we're going to make sure that there is no pistol ammo at all in his inventory. So if we go up here and look, notice that our test suite is failing. But the cool thing about VTest is as you save the files, it actually reruns the, the test. And if I were to change like the dependencies of this test, it'll rerun just the test that changed. At least that's what I've seen. It's really nice. The first part of test-driven development is you write a failing test. You want to make sure the test is written properly, but it should fail. And then you want to come back and you want to make it pass. How do you make this thing pass? Well, we could probably go into the, the player entity and try to figure out where this logic needs to be modified. So we're going to go ahead and just go to the definition of this, like this. And then I'm going to just find a handle attack method. Oops, I kind of searched the wrong one. Handle attack, here we go. And this is the handle attack method of the player. So take some time, read through this, try to understand what's going on. But basically down here, we do weapon entity.attack. So, hey, it's probably happening in here that it does something with the weapon that we have attached. Okay, so if we have a, for example, a pistol, Maybe we should go and look at the pistol entity. Uh, let's go over here. And then again, we have this attack method. And this attack method, oh, we have a console log here. Let's get rid of that. Always clean up your code as you're going through it. If you see something that could be cleaned up, just clean it up right then and there. Okay. We have a little comment that says consume ammo, but we don't like comments in, in code. So let's just delete this because we like people to be confused when they read through our code base. So get rid of that. And we want to basically try to modify this to make this test pass. Remember, the test is running in the background as we're saving files. And we want to make this turn green. We don't want any red here. So how do we make this test turn green? We need to remove it from the inventory. So we could probably say, if the count of the ammo, so we have the ammo index, we're decrementing the count here. So it might make sense to just check if the ammo index count is equal to one or less, we need to just remove it. So I think this might fix it, but let's just save the file and go back and check. And it passed. Did this pass for the right reasons? Let's let's verify it in the game. So let's go over here, let's refresh. Let's pick up a pistol and some ammo. And I'm just gonna fire the gun a couple times. And the ammo has been deleted. So I think there's an issue there. The issue was is that it deleted the ammo when it had two, okay? So I think the test is not proper. That's something that's very important to get used to when you're writing tests is make sure your test is actually verifying what it needs to test. Let's just verify that one more time because I'm pretty sure I saw it remove the bullet a little bit early. So let's grab another pistol. When I get to two, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to do it again. Yeah, so it's deleting it on two, not good. So obviously I could probably fix this by just like changing this to be zero. Um, but actually what I want to do is I want to go back to the test because I actually want to kind of like emulate that a little bit. Now this, this could be debatable. You might not like what I'm doing here, but I'm actually going to start this off as two. And then I'm going to go ahead and update once. And I'm going to verify that he still has ammo. And then I'm going to update again. And then I want to verify that the ammo is now actually removed. Okay, so let's, let's do this. And now this test is failing. This is a much more accurate test where I started with two bullets. I fired one and then I checked to make sure I still have one more piece of ammo left. And then I fired again and now it's gone. But you could argue that this test is kind of redundant. It's kind of, kind of dumb. But I think the issue is, is that I could just simply say less than one, right? And then that should pass. And then we're going to go over here and just try it one more time in the game. There we go. So I'm happy with that. I think the test is decent and I think the implementation could probably use some work. So just to make sure I actually understand what this code is doing, basically update item state is taking this and overriding the inventory slot. So this would make sense. I think it'd be better if I just said if it's equal to less than or equal to zero. I think this would just read a little bit better. And again, the great thing about having a test is you can change this code however you want, right? I could just go ahead and like move stuff around. And the moment this stuff starts failing, I know that I have a battery factoring that I just broke. Okay, even if I like mistype something up here, okay? Again, it's failing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and commit this and we'll just say um, adding a test to verify ammo is removed from inventory on last shot. Okay, let's just go ahead and sync that up. And there you go. You have seen me write a red, green, test-driven development approach for adding a feature to a game. And hopefully you feel a little bit more familiar with VTest and testing in general. But let me know if this test seems like it's good. Let me know in the comments if you think it's bad or there's some other way I should do this. Let me know. But a test should be easy to read. Like you should be able to read through this and understand from a developer perspective. Okay, like I understand what's going on. I'm pushing some stuff to the inventory. I'm setting the player to fire. I update. I assert. I update again. All right. So anyway, have a good day. Happy coding.